Okay, so let's talk about building mobile applications now. Um, um, what I'm going to talk about is native script and how you can actually use Vue to produce a native script application, um, uh, a native mobile application. So as a quick recap, um, first of all, native script. Native script is an open source framework for building truly native mobile applications. Um, so what that means is that this is not a Cordova based solution. It is really a native mobile application, but it's a cross-platform mobile application. So you're going to be building for iOS and for Android at the same time. It's, and like I said, it's not a Cordova solution, so there's not going to be any HTML, no browser, no web view. Um, what you end up getting when you see a label, when you see a button, when you see a list view, it's whatever Apple thought about and whatever Google thought about. It, it is going to be native components. So you get skills to use. So anything that you already know, JavaScript, CSS, and even TypeScript, you get to reuse a lot of no node modules, NPM modules. You get to reuse third-party iOS and, uh, and Android libraries. Again, because of the way the native script works, even CocoaPods or Android libraries that you find on the App Store, uh, on, on, the, on the Google kind of ecosystem for building uh, applications, you can use them in a native script application with JavaScript. At the end of the day, you get to easily use native APIs. That means that there's not going to be a wrapper. Um, any class, any method, any property, anything in the namespace that exists in the iOS SDKs or in the Android SDKs, you have access to all of that without ever having to write Swift or having to write any Java or Objective-C or anything like that. With JavaScript, any new crazy method that Apple thought about, you have access to it. So you can think about native script as the bridge between the, um, the JavaScript world and Android and, and, and iOS. As a quick example, let's take a look at this little snippet of code. We see right here, um, we're creating an instance of a time object, an android.text.format.time, but we're doing it in JavaScript. This is 100% JavaScript code. We're even calling the set method on that instance of the time object, and we're passing it three parameters, one, zero, two, and 2015, this is all JavaScript code, but what's actually being invoked underneath it all is a Google internal API for the set method on the time object. We can even console.log, this is a JavaScript concept, the output of the time.format method. So you can see the two worlds coexisting here. The same can be said for iOS. We can create an instance of a UI alert view. We can set the message, uh, the message property for it, and we can uh, invoke the add button with title a method on it and invoke the show method on it to, of course, show that alert view. Now, the thing is that in reality, you probably don't want to do this because the, the whole point of uh, for doing native script is to have a cross-platform solution. Um, so this is where the um, cross-platform components come into play. So first of all, to produce the UI, we have created some wrapper modules that, that you can use uh, so that, for instance, when you see a label, you're writing that in XML. This is an XML construct of, of a label that internally, when it's processed by the native script rendering engine, it's going to, well, first of all, figure out which platform it's running on and then turn that into an Android label if it's on an Android and a UI label if it's on an iOS. So you're writing your, application, uh, your application's UI in this kind of generic set of white flag uh, components that we've created for your XML. Um, but internally, that's producing 100% native UI. So the performance of the application is what you would expect as if somebody had written that application with Swift or Objective-C. You get full access to you know, the hardware. Um, so it's not just going to be a little browser that is with clever CSS mimicking what an, uh, an iPhone application or an Android application would look like. It's entirely native. So there's going to be, uh, of course, modules for the user interface. There's going to be modules for other non-UI stuff. And we can think about, of course, HTTP client. There's, it's going to, you, you only care about the generic HTTP client that we provide. And then you trust it internally. It's you know, doing the right thing to perform the actual network request. The same, of course, for file access and all kinds of crap wrapper cross-platform modules that you can use. Now, to style the application, though, this is where it gets tricky, right? You can actually use CSS. So even though we're not working with HTML elements at all, there's not going to be any divs or spans or things like that, 
It is, you know, Native Script has its own um, set of XML markup for defining UI. You can still style it with CSS. It's not going to be all of CSS because, of course, some things just simply do not apply within the environment of a mobile, native mobile app. But we have a subset of CSS that you can use. Um, to start a new project with, with Native Script, um, first of all, the ideal thing would be to install the CLI just to make yourself your life easier. And with the CLI, you have a TNS um, shortcut to, uh, and TNS, by the way, stands for Telerik Native Script. Telerik is a company that created uh, Native Script, so that's the, the, the shorthand for TNS. And then after you, you have that, you can TNS run on iOS or TNS run on Android. And um, the cool thing about Native Script, in my opinion, is that this is going to be a better experience even for a native app. So the first thing is, of course, it's a cross-platform app. But the other thing is that since it's running via JavaScript, you don't have to stop the app, recompile, and redeploy to the running device. Every change that you make, it gets, uh, there's a live sync process that we set up. And just like is, uh, as if you were building a website, it gets auto, uh, it gets auto sent those changes to the, to the running app. So you, as opposed to a regular, you know, flow of development for native apps, you don't have to recompile the app at all. You compile the first time. It, it does take a while, as usual, for, for any, you know, any native apps. So you compile the first time, but we set up the live sync connection, and every change that you, see, that you make will get sent to the device. Now, the cool thing about native script is that at its core, really, is just an, an, an option for people to access native APIs with JavaScript. But that, is, that actually um, allows for some options to use uh, other frameworks. So we have uh, official integration with Angular. If you're, if you're an Angular developer, you can, you can use that architecture completely for a native script app. And we noticed through the community, somebody, somebody created a Vue integration into native script. So you can actually use the Vue architecture um, to produce a native script app. The one place where it's going to be different is in the template of a, of, a, of a view component, for instance. Instead of writing HTML in there, you're going to be writing the native script markup syntax that we just showed before. So let's actually um, do a demo of that. All right, let's do this quickly. I'm going to create a new app. Let's call it View Meetup. So this is again the TNS command to create a new app. This is not creating a view uh, integrated native script app yet. That's what we're going to do. So go in there. I'm going to install the, the NPM package that allows for the view framework to be used. Uh, and that is somewhere in here. There we go. So NPM install saving the native script view NPM package for the app. And I'm going to simply run it on iOS this time. So the first time, it is going to compile the app, and it's going to put it on my iPhone simulator, which I have here. All right, so here's the app. The app, what it does at this point, is not Vue.js, just a label, a button, and a label. And when I tap on the button, it reduces that counter. So let's turn that into a Vue app. So the first thing that you need to do is to import that module that we were just talking about. Uh, by doing that, you, you, you have access to a view um, instance in a way. Um, so I'm going to quickly create a new instance of view. And I'm setting the data, the template, the methods, and the computer for it. So let's duplicate the UI, first of all. Uh, that is going to be exactly the same thing we're looking at. But now it's going to be within view. Just by hitting save, we're, we should be close to where we were before. Now, of course, there's no data, there's no counter, there's no message. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. The data is there should be a counter here. And there it is. Add that counter. Uh, we should add uh, the tap handler method for that button. And we do that. The only thing that it does is reduces the counter. And then the final thing that we need to do is on that label that is bound to this message property uh, that we know changes. I'm going to use the computed uh, functionality for it. And that should get us there. Clean it up a bit. 
I'm going to zoom in just in case people can see it. So now it's going to reload the app. And using view now, and the view, uh, and the view framework within a native script uh, uh, environment, we get a native app which with, w that has the exact same functionality. Now to show the CSS aspect of things as well, by the way, uh, we already have a kind of like a bootstrap uh, theme that you can use. So I'm using the light theme right now, but I can use, uh, I think there's an aqua one. And that changes and we have all kinds of themes that you can use. And again, I'm making all these changes into a native app, but there's no HTML here involved. Um, so that's native script with Vue. And uh, the last thing I want to mention, by the way, is that we have a developer day event here in New York. And just because you came here, you have a discount. It's going to be two days packed with sessions, uh, lunch included, of course. There's going to be after party event, everything. So. I would encourage you to go. It's going to be here in New York. I won't make it, but <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you.